we're going to do a head-to-head -head contest between asexual cloning and sexual reproduction. And uh, I'm going to need, you, you, perhaps you've been wondering what these fruits and vegetables are for up here on the, you've noticed these? Okay. Um, so I need four volunteers. Um, I need four volunteers. Now, I need three females and one male. Uh, don't worry, this is not, I'm not running a dating service or anything. Um, okay, so I'm going to, got uh, one, one woman up here and uh, one here and one back there. And I need, okay, sir, yes, why don't you join us? Okay, so if you'll come down front and take your positions behind the, uh, behind the table here, we will put you in charge of your, uh, of your genomes. Um, okay, so, sir, why don't you stand here? And I'm going to have, yeah, why don't you come over here? And if you could be here and there. That looks great. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to explain that you, you didn't know it when you, when you took these positions, but uh, I see actually the asexual experiment is over here on the right. Now, remember, on the, on the cloning, on those, when we clone, when we reproduce by cloning, we have female-only species, all right? And we have over here the, uh, we have over here the gene shufflers. This is the sexual recombination team, okay? And we have each of these, um, uh, each of these members of these two species, um, the sexual species here, the clonal species over there. Each of the members of these species has three different genes, two copies of each gene. Right? And it looks like, and I just want to, I want everyone to verify that this contest is starting uh, with a level playing field. Right? Everybody has got, would you please confirm, would you agree that you all have the same set of genes to begin? Okay. Uh, you can inspect any of these fruits and vegetables um, if you feel, you know, that you might be shortchanged. I want everybody to start feeling good about their, their genes and their genomes. Um, okay. So, now... The trick is, I gotta, I gotta express some of the rules. So, first of all, each female can have one offspring per reproductive cycle. Males can have no offspring. I'm sorry about this, but <laughs> this is just the way it works. Now, the clonal reproducers, the clonal reproducers, you are gonna pass all of your genes to each of your offspring. Okay? You are gonna pass all of your genes to all of your offspring. You got that? Okay, now over here on this side, you are going to you are going to pass one of each of your genes to your offspring, and you are going to contribute. So the two of you are going to have to create sort of a, a tray when we have when we carry this out. Okay, so let's go through the first cycle. So you two are just going to have an offspring. You're going to have one offspring. These genes, one with these. You need to make you two need to make choices and put. Uh, one of each of your genes onto the tray in the middle. Okay? Uh, one of each of your genes. <laughs> uh, it's not a good idea to stop at one chromosome. You gotta, you gotta do the whole thing. Okay, now, okay. So, who wins in this first generation? The sexual or the asexual? The asexual, the asexual is ahead two to one, right? This looks, oh man, sex is, is going to quickly run out, run in. Okay, would you uh, disassemble your offspring? We're going to try this again. We've got to see if, we've got to somehow help this crew. Okay, so what, now actually the claim was made that recombination, that, my, that sex creates diversity. What actually creates diversity? What is the source of the raw materials for evolution? It's not just recombination, you have to have another process. Mutation. You've got to have mutation, right? So, now some mutations are beneficial and create interesting diversity. So, for instance, we are going to trade. Uh, would you mind if I? Okay, okay. Um, now, just to keep things fair, we're going, to do, uh, we're going to have some mutations arise that are equally beneficial in creating diversity over here on the. Uh, and let's. Would you like to trade one of those heads of lettuce? Okay, great. And would you like to do the same? Uh, thank you. Okay, so just to show that we're being fair and the, the rates of mutation in these two. Okay, so if we now carried out recombination 
in, uh, in this group, you could see that these two could put together these interest, an interesting combination. And so, well, maybe we'd, th we'd be thinking that the sexual species is starting to catch up, but it turns out that most mutations, most mutations are not beneficial. Most mutations actually diminish gene function or cause genes to work a little less well. They essentially cause genes to rot. So I have to bring the bad news now, which is, uh, well, there's a little bit wilted uh, lettuce, and I'm afraid I'm going to have to, uh, you're going to have to hand over this nice fresh one and replace it with the wilted. And uh, just to be fair about this, we'll do the same over here, uh, if, if you don't mind. Okay, I, I'm sure you're quite happy with this. And then, and then it turns out that this process just continues. Deleterious mutations are far more common. And so, uh, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> Audrey, uh, would you be willing to trade? Okay. And uh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> this is the way it works. Uh, okay. So now, now I'd like to see... Looking here over on the, on the clonal species, the clonal species has no choice but to convey this mixed bag. We got some good diversity, but we got some rotted out stuff. And now I would like the sexual species to choose uh, wisely among their genes and create a healthy basket of fruits and vegetables to be passed to the offspring. Excellent, excellent. You really got this down. It only took a couple of generations to figure out how to do this. Good. So the point is that clonal reproducers win in the short term. Okay? If you're starting from a level playing field, the clonal reproducers win in the short term because everybody can have offspring. Mutation provides the raw materials. Some mutations add beneficial diversity, but most mutations actually mildly diminish gradually cause the genes to rot. And sexual reproducers, um, sexual reproducers have the advantage only in the long run because they get the opportunity over an evolutionary time frame to pass the beneficial mutations together. Uh, you guys could have put this orange in here. I'm going to help you a little bit more, right? Um, See, so you have a really nicely mixed tray there, okay? You get, the, you get the opportunity to combine um, the beneficial mutations without the, the drag of the detrimental. And so we see then that meiosis serves as evolution's swap shop. Right? We got the swap shop over here. And males essentially provide spare parts for swapping in. Okay? Um, and so what I'd like to do is um, I think we should all acknowledge the great contributions of our volunteers. And, um, and you, are, you are free to take back with you any of the fruits and vegetables that you'd like. Uh, now everybody, it looks like everybody's going meiotic right now. Uh, and I also have for you MIT t-shirts. Um, thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Okay. Great. All right.